Hey, this is Jim from the Pain PT. Today we're going to talk about chronic pain in the brain, the science behind it, part one. This is really good stuff. I want to go over and show you how the science is showing it's the brain that predicts and predisposes someone to develop chronic pain, not the physical tissues. Uh, if you watched my video earlier about the difference between a chronic and acute pain, you'll see that Acute pain is more about the physical tissues, where chronic pain is more about the brain and nervous system. So I'm going to show you the evidence here to prove that. Let's get started. So this first study was done in 2012. Researchers from Northwestern University, and what they did was look at people with acute low back pain versus healthy controls. They took brain MRIs four times over a period of a year. And what they found in the people who still had pain after a year was that there was a greater connectivity between the nucleus accumbens and the medial prefrontal cortex. And what the nucleus accumbens does, it actually um, allows us to evaluate and perceive the world and what's happening around us. Whereas our prefrontal cortex, the frontal part of our brain, is important in planning complex behaviors, our personality expression, decision making, organizing our thoughts and actions. So. What was most significant here was this. The researchers were able to predict with 85% accuracy from these brain MRIs who would transition from acute to chronic low back pain. So what that means is that these connectivity changes in the brain between the nucleus accumbens and the prefrontal cortex were present at the onset of the study, not after a year. And this has given us evidence that it is indeed the brain that transitions acute pain to chronic pain. Let's look at another study here. This second one was a follow-up to the first one. Uh, same researchers looked at 46 low back pain participants. Again, took brain scans at the onset and one year later. They found similar findings. The nucleus accumbens and the medial prefrontal cortex had a greater connectivity and these changes were seen both at the beginning and end of the study. So this is the second study to show that pre-existing brain changes predict and predispose the development of chronic low back pain. Um, and if you look at the study there, it was funded by the National Institutes of Health. It suggests brain is hardwired for chronic pain. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't change it, but it means that it's there uh, from the beginning and that's what keeps pain going because we know with acute pain the body heals. We know the tissues heal and so the pain should go away. But when the brain is having this extra connection between these two areas, it really puts us at risk for the development of ongoing pain. Okay, this third study really challenges the long-standing views of the science of pain. This time they followed people with low back pain for up to three years. They took MRIs like they did before they found similar findings before in, in the same parts of the brain, but they also showed shrinkages in two other parts of the brain, the hippocampus and the amygdala. Now the hippocampus is part of what we call our limbic system, which is our system that deals with emotions. It helps to regulate our emotions and also works with our memory, especially our long-term memory. The amygdala, again, is a part of this limbic system and it also helps process emotions and our emotional responses to things and it works with our memory and our decision making. So both these areas of the brain and chronic pain were, were shrunk in size. And these changes were seen again at the onset of the pain and they stayed consistent over the three years of pain. So the researchers concluded these results challenge long-standing views of the science of pain. Here we establish that the cortical limbic brain not the initial back pain, determine most of the risk for developing chronic pain. So this is the third study to show that it's the brain and not the tissues that are causing chronic pain. This last study we're going to go over today is titled The Emotional Brain as a Predictor and Amplifier of Chronic Pain. Done in 2016, it was a review article looking at all the current science out there. And the authors came up with these conclusions I'll read them to you here. The first one is, it should be noted that earlier clinical studies have identified a long list of risks for chronic pain, such as demographics, 
affective states, lifestyle, comorbidities, and others, yet collectively such parameters account for a relatively small amount of variance for chronic pain, about 10 to 20 percent. In contrast, the brain's anatomic and functional properties predict the development of chronic pain with 80 to 100 percent accuracy. That is a very powerful statement there. We have a greater prediction for chronic pain by looking at the brain than we do looking at x-rays and MRIs of the physical tissues, which you can learn more about in some of my other videos when I talk about each of the body parts and the science for uh, x-rays and MRIs. So the last thing to say here is the fact that chronic pain seems to be critically dependent on the brain limbic properties, expands the general notion of pain, placing it within the proximity of negative emotions and negative affective states. And uh, I talked earlier in one of my other videos about how chronic pain is more emotional than sensory. And as we move from acute to chronic pain, it becomes more emotional, and especially with negative emotions. I hope you enjoyed this today. Hope you learned some new and interesting information. I'm here for any questions. You can find more information at thepainpt.com or you can always email me at jim at thepainpt.com. Thank you very much.